When it comes to teaching math to young children, this is a question I get all the time because there's not just one thing to learn, right? There is, there's so many parts and pieces that go into math. How do we know yeah. where to start? Well, I think looking first, you know, at a child's physical, you know, their, their whole physical body is really a part of it. Not a lot of people think of this, but when you look at, um, a child, you know, being able to, I did a video on my website where I have a child skipping or like crossing their midline, um, you know, and all the different parts of the brain that have to be interacting. And so if I, I can go to a second grade classroom and tell the kids, okay, line up on the blacktop and I want you to skip, you know, going across the blacktop, I can pick out, is this child, this child, and this child, the kids that are struggling in your classroom. And typically the teacher says, how'd you know that? Because skipping is a rhythm. It's a, you know, a, a kind of a learned um, pattern, if you will, that really links itself to math, just like dynamic and static balance. So a child walking, you know, heel to toe versus maybe, you know, putting their arms out, closing their eyes and putting one leg up and counting to six without falling over. You know, that is a readiness skill for reading. So just as we know about the brain and the way the brain works, really for math, I know it sounds like, you know, not mathematical, but really their physical body and looking at you know, a screener to kind of see where are our kids motor wise in preschool and pre-K, where are they able to cross their midline? Can they skip? Can they, um, you know, do lots of things with catching out in front of them instead of using their body for convergence and tracking? So we kind of always first look at, you know, sort of the motor first, if you can kind of put that sort of in one, you know, spot. But the other part really goes back to that real objects in the physical world that kids are having, you know, rich conversations about how numbers, you know, really are, you know, really are related to each other. And so I think, for that, you know, kids that come in and they're not counting, you know, that it means they're not hearing the rhythm or they might count one, two, three, five, seven, nine. Um, you can't really assess kinesthetic one-to-one -one correspondence until a child can count to 10. Because I don't know if necessarily, you know, you're, you're counting and kind of walking, you know, and corresponding it. I kind of relate that idea of the kinesthetic one-to-one -one correspondence very similar to rhyming. You know, so if I said cat, hat, and the kid says water bottle, <laughs> you know, we know that they really aren't um, able to connect that rhyme. And so although I can't make kids rhyme, I can provide lots of experiences with music and fun and play to help get that rhyming in. It's the same thing with kinesthetic one-on-one -on -one correspondence, that if kids are fluidly skipping and having the patterns that they're doing, they're eventually, as, as they're counting and kind of learning those parts to it, they will start to be able to walk and count their steps, which is that beginning phase, you know, if you compare it to reading, like rhyming.